enjoying ourselves today, folks? Well, if drinking white wine out of a four-ounce glass is your idea of enjoyment, see, it's white wine in a three-ounce glass, red in a four. Hey, you and the goatee. Two words for you, pal. Lighten up. Frenchy, I need an extension cord to buffalo wings. Go. Au revoir. Raising the roof with the coot. How you doing? Who's for it? Raise your hand. Anybody? <laughs> Look who's happy now. PlayStation. When September 9th, 1995 rode around, after a failed partnership with Nintendo, Sony unleashed the PlayStation 1 to the world. It was a massive success. It was priced at $299. Unlike the Nintendo 64 that used cartridges to play games with limited memory available for assets, the PlayStation 1 used a CD-ROM with as much storage as 660 MB of data. So, where is the game? What good is the ultimate gaming system without the ultimate fighting game? Tekken for the Sony PlayStation, powered by Namco. Um, pick up a six-pack, you idiot! The Nintendo 64 used a weird upside-down W-shaped controller. Meanwhile, the PS1 had a controller much easier to hold. But in November of 1997, Sony unleashed the standard of controllers. The end-all, be-all. The DualShock complete with two analog sticks and later on built-in rumble vibration system. <laughs> the PlayStation released a bunch of games of all varieties, but in the end it was deemed a more mature console than the Nintendo 64. Let us take a look at some of the games. Crash Bandicoot 1 Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Crash Bandicoot Warped. Stuart Copeland is in the second group. He's been making music all his life, first as a co-founder and drummer of The Police, then as a composer for films such as Rumblefish, Highlander 2, and Wall Street. Now he's writing the music for Spyro the Dragon, his first video game project. What makes composing for video games fun? How does he do it, and why does he like it? 
PlayStation Underground visited his small, unmarked studio in Hollywood, where he showed us some secrets. Good. We have sound. Step one is to beat the level. Now, for a 10-year-old kid, this is no problem. But for me, a little, you know, I have to beat the level and figure out the jumping, and I, and I kind of navigate my way through the, the uh, levels. In the very early stage, it's a lot of fun because I find a level that I can beat and get an attitude for it and then uh, create a piece of music for it. Spyro the Dragon 1. Spyro to Ripo's Rage and Gateway to Glimmer. Spyro, Year of the Dragon. Ape escape. Harvest Moon. Brave Fencer Masashi. Shoot! Why do I have to do this? What the heck? I'll get Lumina, and then I'm out of here. Siphon filter. No location yet for Kravich, and I don't see any sign of Aramon. Copy. I'm on my way.
by the end, the PlayStation 1 sold 102.49 million consoles worldwide. The Nintendo 64 only sold around 32.93 million units. This proved to Sony that they could take on the gaming champion of the world, Nintendo. Sony, with each successor to the PlayStation 1, has almost always dominated Nintendo, with special exceptions in the handheld market where Nintendo has always reigned supreme. What are your PlayStation 1 memories? Let us know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe for more gaming videos.